Metal, metal monthly, metal, all new metal, not new metal, not that kind of new. Howdy, banger pals. Blaine Smith joining you for another Metal Monthly Bangers Monthly look at what's coming out in metal releases. If you're new here, the way this show works is I find the five best underground metal albums coming out every single month. I show them to you. You, hopefully, buy them. Go over to their band camp. We want to sell records for cool bands. We want to give them money. Before we get to that, there are so many metal releases that come out every single month. Can't talk about them all. So here's a quick release calendar of big, noteworthy releases. Keep an eye out. Get those special editions for whatever you got to do. So... February 2nd, Ghoul, Goopy Boys are back with the Noxious Concoctions EP on Tank Crime. KMFDM is releasing Let Go on Metropolis. And Necro Wretch Banger, TV Metal Monthly alumni, so definitely pick this one up, is releasing Swords of Dijal on Season of Mist. February 9th, the new Dark Lord of Black Metal herself is back. Halder is releasing Verses in Oath on 20 Bucks Spin. Morbid Saint is releasing Swallowed by Hell on High Roller Records. Spectral Voice, another big release, is releasing Sparm, Spark Mouse, Spark, I don't know, man, on Dark Descent. Gonna be a cool record. February 16th, Dark Space is releasing Minus two on Season of Mist. Isan releases Isan on Candlelight on February 23rd. Kiss is done. Or are they? And also, are the Kiss members done? Apparently not. Ace Freely is releasing 10,000 Volts on MNRK. Amaranth is releasing The Catalyst on Nuclear Blast. Borknagar is releasing Fall on Century Media. And Job for a Cowboy is releasing Moon Healer on Metal Blade. So, that's the calendar. Now, let's get into my five picks for to the underground. Woo. Up first, we've got Petrification. They're putting out Sever Sacred Light on Sfart Records. Boy, that's a lot of S sounds. Um, anyways, it comes out February 9th. Have a listen now. Boom. <laughs> So we kick things off with some Portland-based death metal. The album cover, I unfortunately don't know the artist, but I do love it. Tons of little details. Super fun, super wacky. Great way to present a record to me. And speaking of great ways to present a record, how about opening a record with a dive bomb? Just that dive bombs right into the pleasure spot of my brain. And speaking of pleasure spots of my brain, uh, Petrification plays the style of death metal uh, best described as, hey, uh, is this death metal? Wait, is this death doom? I don't know. It's pretty slow, but I don't think it's that slow. It's kind of on the border, but death doom's already on the border, so I guess it's on the border of the border style that Iotopsy pioneered. Um, So overall, you're getting a more mid-tempoed record that's kind of dripping in atmosphere. Uh, When they do kick it up a notch, it's got a nice punky feel to the drumming, so that kind of gives you the energy to get across the finish line every time. But you don't actually really need energy on this record because in the slow parts, they really managed to craft a lot of cool little intricacies that give you a lot of places to put your attention. Uh, There's a lot of moving parts even when they're slow. I guess moving isn't the right word when they're that slow. There's a lot of crawling parts going on and yeah, I just love the way it sounds. This is a seemingly easy, but I think the difficultest style of death metal to pull off really well. So kudos to the boys. They nailed it. I love the record and I hope you will too. This is Farsot Life Promised Death on Lupus Lounge Records coming out February 16th. Have a listen. So now we're talking about some German avant-garde depressive black metal. We've got a black metal cover that's kind of unconventional for a black metal record. I like that. Nice little twist. 
because the record is a bit of a twist. It's depressive black metal, but it's avant-garde. What does that mean? Well, you get a depressive record, but it's recorded well because it's avant-garde. So assumingly, this is a group of people with like social bonds and, you know, not just a solo hikikomori plugged directly into a laptop somewhere in Norway. That does mean you're going to get a German guy doing spoken word to you. It also means you're going to get this nice contrast between your kind of typical depressive, harsh black metal passages and some like kind of like pretty nice, airy kind of more out there parts. I hesitate to say this name as a comparison because I worry that just saying it will conjure Blake to appear and try and sell us some illegal bootlegs he'll never send us. But it does kind of remind me of back when Nockmistium was good. Also very German, though, like German Nockmistium, minus the crimes. And to show the record is truly avant-garde, one of the highlights for me is fantastic bass all the way throughout. Bass? In a black metal record? Now we're pushing boundaries, baby! We did black metal. We did death metal. We're keeping the tour of the good metal subgenres going with doom metal, Stiggy and Crown, Funeral for a King, Cruz del Sur Music, February 23rd! Yes, it's doom metal, but crank that knob up a notch. It's epic doom metal from Los Angeles. The album cover, just artwork. Yay. Artwork by Christopher Whip. No logo drop shadow on there to ruin things. A band brave enough to let the artwork speak for itself. That's a band I want to be a part of. And I definitely want to be a part of this band because it sounds great. What does it sound like? Well, imagine you're playing Darkstalkers. You've picked Dimitri. You perform Midnight Bliss on... Candlemass. I don't know what version of Darkstalkers you got. That's some Mugen shit, but it sounds cool. Send it my way. Yeah, that's a long way of saying we've gender swapped the Candlemass vocals to great effect. Melissa Pinion has the perfect ability to like hold a note and that great low register tone for epic doom metal. Sounds fantastic. You put that over top of some absolutely pounding drums, some phenomenal guitar tone that's just fuzzy and full but doesn't cloud things and Hey, now we're cooking up a Doom record. Also, just a little quick, again, no logo on the cover. It's like they listen to all my checklists. They have an intro track. What does the intro track sound like? The intro track sounds like a nice summary of what the music sounds like. It's an instrumental, just kind of little summary of everything you're going to get on the record. It's a good way to intro a record. Bad way to intro a record? Some pots clanging over some digital wind. So, yes, yes, yes. And... Yeah, this is definitely epic with a capital E. If you like the epic subgenre of doom metal, you've got a record to just add immediately into your catalog. Hmm. And hey, if this isn't enough things to add to your catalog, why don't you head over to twitch.tv slash metal comedy. You can follow me every Sunday. I research this live on Twitch, 4 p.m. Eastern time, which means you get to hear not just these records, but every single metal album coming out every single month we look at all of them good bad great awful you get to hear them all and you get to hear about only metal around here and not products because we have a patreon that is how we financially fund this whole rigmarole so if you like this and if you don't like being advertised to besides us advertising us to you head on over to patreon toss us a couple bucks and if you don't have a couple bucks you know a subscription a like a comment goes a long way much appreciated gang if I had scripted this perfectly, we'd now be onto a thrash record. But unfortunately, I don't really skip this. I just pick five records that I think are sick. And uh, your next record, Pestilength, Solar Chlorex, Deborah Morty Productions, February 16th. Not thrash, very sick.
So this is some Spanish extreme metal. The album cover fits the sound of it perfectly. Nemuria Visions nailed visually the feel of listening to the album. So great job there. I don't know what to call this besides extreme metal. Like the vocals border on brutal death metal, which is surprising for me because I do not like brutal death metal vocals, but they really work here. Uh, you've got like black metal blasts. You've got discordant passages pushing the edge of listenability and then beautiful doom passages that just anybody would enjoy. I don't know. You combine the absolutely unnatural sound of this record with the incredibly natural sounding production. It's you're in the room um, and you've really got a record that'll push those audiophile setups to their limit. If you spent too much on cables, boy, do I have something else to sell you. Um, uh, but this thing actually uh, works. Um, <laughs> this is definitely a double black diamond listening experience, not for the faint of heart. And just like riding a double black diamond, um, you're going to either end up in one of two states at the bottom. Um, in pain, wondering why you started this journey, or full of adrenaline and absolutely jazzed about what you just finished. Um, uh, bringing these types of albums is really one of the main reasons I do this show because stuff like this, it's hard to give a natural spotlight to because it's for a very niche crowd. But I feel like all of the niche crowd just joined me on YouTube every time I do this video. So thanks for that. Thus, we come to our palette cleanse of the month. It's Iron Curtain, Savage Dawn on Dying Victims Productions coming out February 23rd. Our closer this month is Spanish Speed Metal. You've got a photo album cover by Daniel Rabadan of whatever the hell their mascot's called. I don't know what he is. I don't know who he is, but I love him, and I love that album cover. And by that album cover, you're probably saying, this record's a little weird, right? Yeah, this record's a little weird. Um, it's a Spanish band, but they're called Iron Curtain, and I can't find any connections to Russia in the band except for the fact that on this album, there's a song called Kalishnikov 47 with a bunch of Russian folk elements. It does sound like a record that could have been like a lost tape from the Eastern Bloc, uncovered after years. The only thing that really gives away that it's not that is the production is fantastic. Woo, woo, very professional. Professional in the way that, you know, nothing gets in the way of the band. Not professional in the way that some guy with a bunch of knobs and sliders ruined a record I would have liked. Uh, from the clip, you probably were thinking, hey, uh, this sort of sounds like some Russians bootleg motorhead. You're pretty on point there, but again, not Russian, Spanish. Uh, the record is just full of character. That aforementioned Kalishnikov 47 with the Russian shit. The rattlesnake song with the rattlesnake shit. The thy wolf song with the wolf howls. It's just dripping character. It's dripping charm. And I'm certainly not losing this smile on my face through the entire runtime. So, boy, great way to start the year. Great way to close out this video. And... Thanks for watching. Just, yeah, again, you know, comment down below. Let me know any cool records. What do you think of my picks? What are your picks? Let me know. Get, you know, those chat. Love you. Appreciate you. See you next time.